Hi everybody, it's Joey Remini from seekingbalance.com.au. I'm a vestibular audiologist and a neuroplasticity therapist and I have the great privilege of meeting so many people around the world who are working through and healing complex and chronic forms of vertigo, dizziness or tinnitus. And these are often the invisible sensations and symptoms that largely the medical world has to say, like, we're not sure what there's anything more we can do. You know, you've got, you've got to go and live with it or deal with it. Whereas I help people to understand how their neurons communicate and how to use neuroplasticity to actually change their sensations, change the way their senses are being interpreted by the, by the brain and actually move into a genuine place of healing. And so I feel like I get the, the, the kind of lucky end of the spectrum. I feel a little bit for the doctors who are having to say, sorry, there's nothing we can do. So my podcast and my YouTube channel is really about sharing more of these stories and helping you guys globally meet people who've gone through the process and they can speak with genuine authenticity about what it felt like for them. And today we are speaking to Randy from the US and I love sharing stories, but in particular, Randy, I do love meeting men because it's often less men that volunteer. So thank you so much and welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I, I'm glad to be here. Beautiful. So Randy comes from our, our community of tinnitus um, experiences. I won't call it suffering. And in the Rocksteady program and Rocksteady community, I think it's roughly 20% of people have only tinnitus. Most people have vertigo and tinnitus. And then a few people have only vertigo. So um, you're representing a, a chunk of people actually, Randy, and I'm sure they're out there just going, so what happened? Did you heal it? Did you get through it? What was it like? So do you want to talk us through what you were feeling when you stumbled across Rocksteady and then we'll take it from there. Sure. Um, so my history with tinnitus actually goes back a fairly long way. I first got it like 15 years ago or 16 years ago in 2004, but it was, it was odd, you know, it, 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 it was a kind of a curiosity. I went to the audiologist, they did some tests to make sure there, that there wasn't anything seriously wrong, and they sent me on my way. And so for 15 years, it was, you know, it was there. I noticed it. But if you had ever asked me to, like, make a list of the top 10 problems or issues I had in my life, it probably wouldn't have been on there. You know, I tried a few things along the way. I saw some apps when smartphones came out, and I tried some, you know, music. Uh, masking and some other things and thought, you know, well, you know, I'll always try to figure out a, a way to, 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 um, to deal with this, but it just never was an issue. And then in, um, in early 2019, had a lot of stuff going on in my life. Um, my brother died unexpectedly and shortly thereafter my mother died. She was 88 and it wasn't really a surprise or anything, but a lot of stress from that and at work. And then one night I was on a business trip and I woke up in the middle of the night, my ear was clogged and the tinnitus was extremely loud and it just suddenly freaked me out. It was two in the morning. Mm -hmm. I kind of had a panic attack, which I had never had before. Mm -hmm. I went for a few days, I got back home. I thought, okay, the ear's unclogging, maybe it's getting better, but the tinnitus didn't go away. Then I got anxiety off and on attacks, um, which I had never had before. Mm. I couldn't sleep. And, and I was suddenly just like consumed by this. And the volume of the tinnitus just was very loud. So it, it completely changed about a year ago. Um, I went through all the medical tests that you hear everybody talks about. I went to the ENT. My hearing was the same as it had been 15 years ago. So I knew it wasn't that. Yeah. They gave me some stuff to try to deal with, you know, aller seasonal allergies that I have. Um, but they don't like to hear about tinnitus because it's, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. Sorry. So I was frustrated by that. Um, I got a, a brain scan. There were no tumors or anything. So that made me feel better. But I was just kind of now totally focused and consumed and thinking about every day, this sound in my head. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I managed by myself to get through the anxiety attacks. The insomnia came in and went, but I, I, I kind of got a little bit better. And I did talk to one 
uh, psychologist as part of a kind of a tinnitus management program that I that I went through that I didn't get to spend much time with him, but he did, you know, say that, hey, as soon as you don't care about it anymore, it'll go away. So it kind of put me on that mind-body thought pattern a little bit. So I got I got better, but I was felt like I was still kind of stuck. Yeah. So that's the, when I stumbled yeah. across. No, go ahead. It's like the golden plateau. We get to this place and then we feel hmm. The hmm. Yes. The hump. Right. So it's not it's not my life is over anymore, but I still, you know, you still wake up, you're not looking forward to things and all that. Mm. So that's when I stumbled across um, you on YouTube and and I took the seven day starter course mm -hmm. and, it, and it, you know, seemed like something I wanted to continue. So I, um, you know, signed up for Rack Steady. They make you take the test at the beginning and, and my score was 28 and I'm pretty sure my score, you know, four or five months before that would have been much higher than that. But, you know, 28 is still not particularly good. Well, I'll just put, uh, I'll put that into context for people who aren't, aren't familiar. It's actually a perceived disability score and the maximum score is 100. So 28 out of 100 sounds all right. But the way that the test works, that 28 number means that effectively 28% of the time, or if we round that up to 30% of the time, 30% of the time you're feeling a disability, you're feeling frustrated or feeling like in some capacity you can't live the life you want to live, whether that's physically, positionally moving your head, because when we move our head, it changes the signals in the ears. Um, so functionally, emotionally, and positionally, 28% of the time, you're actually feeling debilitated by the tinnitus. So it, it, it's a very disruptive, invisible condition Yes. And um, and that's why we do that questionnaire at the beginning of Rocksteady because we want to track how am I going emotionally, functionally, and positionally as I start implementing new skills and tools and engaging with neuroplasticity. Yeah. So and that that describes it very well. My you know, it wasn't um, fear or horrible anxiety anymore, but it was still very consuming in my head. It spent you know. It was hard to hard to concentrate. You kept thinking about it. Oh, is it louder? Is it softer? And, you know, will I get to sleep tonight? All that stuff. So that was kind of where I was when I when I got into rock study. So I started there, and then module one, you know, it's like, oh well, you know, these balance exercises, you know, the videos. It, it seemed, you know interesting but my first thought was it's like oh geez i've got tinnitus i don't have vertigo maybe this isn't isn't necessarily um for me but it didn't take a long time um well two things one is the most important thing i think along the way to me it was that belief sometime in module one i think there was a tinnitus specific audio and you said I just want to let you guys know there's nothing wrong with you. You're, you know, the, the body, you're hearing things, noises that your body makes, and that's normal. I hadn't had that input. You kind of go to the medical community and you feel like, okay, it's not life threatening, maybe, but there's still something wrong with you, and there's nothing they can do about it, and it's going to keep getting worse. So, that kind of that initial message when you said there's nothing wrong um was was a big uplifting thing for me mm -hmm. and then um you know so i was a little skeptical with the balance exercises because i thought well this is probably for those vertigo people and not for us tinnitus people but what i found when i started that is i realized it's like i, I start with like the really easy one right where you just put your feet side by side and you close your eyes Mm -hmm. I couldn't keep my balance with my eyes closed. I realized I could barely feel my feet. Mm -hmm. And I realized that my entire life was like up here above my neck. And I had all yeah. this tension in my neck. My jaw was clenched. And, and it took like a week mm -hmm. in module one just where I could like get the, the simplest of all exercises nailed yeah. down. And then I moved up to the heel to toe, but, you know, it was kind of side by side, and that took, another, took a while, 
Yeah. And finally, I graduated to my favorite exercise, which is heel to toe, but like, you know, directly yeah. lined up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over time, I could, with my eyes closed, relax, stay balanced. And it's like you feel gravity for the first time in a long time. And you could just feel yeah. the senses in your body that you had never felt before because you were so focused up here. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to share Randy's story because uh, worst case scenario for me anyway is that tinnitus people might engage in the rock study process but reject it because they're like, no, I don't want to go into my body. I don't have dizziness. When I've got in capital letters the whole way through, this is so important for people with tinnitus. You've got to get back into your body. This is actually not vestibular therapy from a physical therapy vertigo point of view. This is a mind body emotional recentering where you guys, I'm encouraging you to go beyond the sound in the body and actually go into what you feel through your feet, hips, shoulders, spine, etc. Because when we abandon our body, we really lose a lot of our health emotionally and physically. And coming back into the body is often what the tinnitus is calling for, right? The tinnitus is the message. The body is saying something to us. And I, I don't feel comfortable. I'd love to hear your perspective on this, Randy, because I think it's extremely nonlinear and complicated. But I don't feel comfortable with this idea that, you know, stress causes tinnitus or tinnitus causes stress. I really don't think it's that linear. I think the sounds in the body are there and they're pretty much always there. And the volume's up and down. And our awareness or concentration and focus upon it is up and down throughout our lives. And I think it's a very complex interplay of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual manifestations as we're growing as humans and that's why i think the medical world gets a bit stumped by it because it's not simplistic it's not linear it's not even directly related to hearing loss because there's many people with normal hearing and bothersome tinnitus and there's many people with hearing loss and no tinnitus whatsoever so there's a lot of misinformation out there and i love it that you went through that <clears throat> resistance and frustration of hang on a minute i don't have vertigo what's all this about and you actually eased into it and you gave it a go. And then, of course, you felt the benefits of getting your mind and body back into that place of relaxation and center. So do you want to, do you want to speak a little bit more about that? Because I do think it's very important uh, for a lot of the listeners to, to, to consider. Sure. Um, you know, it, I, I just didn't realize, you know, I had always in my life, I think, done a very good job of, kind of suppressing you know any any stresses or things that would um you know cause problems or have to think about too much i think it, that probably just caught up with me over time and you you don't realize that you're kind of losing touch with with your body and and how you feel about things yeah. And that's where I was kind of stuck, I think, even though I was able to to get myself out of the the anxiety attack patterns and some of the things that, that came with the um kind of the increased intensity of the tinnitus that hit. Um I, I couldn't get any further than that. Mm -hmm. Um and and it was just that kind of getting back in touch with the body. And, and, and the live calls helped um, a lot because I think it stressed those things. So kind of being able to listen to those um, from, from in, in the uh, rock study program. I mean, all, all of the things beyond the balance exercises, which were my favorites, um, and doing those, you know, three or four times a day, you know, the, the tapping, the healing hands, mm -hmm. um, the 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 focus on not trying to get rid of your tinnitus, rather figure out what you want to feel like yeah. and focus on that. Those those things never would have occurred to me when I was if I was trying to do this by myself. So I'm a firm believer now in the mind body connection to various aspects of healing and mm -hmm. and dealing with things. Um, and I just, you know, I, I wouldn't have ever been that way, you know, a year ago yeah. when this when this hit at all. It would be, you know, there's got to be a pill that I can take that will make this go away or, or whatever. So, um, 
you know, and it's a journey. I, you know, my score now is a two. Um, I think the two is because I still feel a little frustrated every once in a while. I still, you know, I, I, the good, the good news is, is I have days of complete silence. I mean, it's been 15 years since I had complete yeah. And silence. And to put it, to put it into perspective, two out of a hundred means 2% of the time I am impacted yep. by the sensation or the tinnitus. So it's, it's extremely normal. I'm pretty sure they consider it normal once you're under 16. So yep. being frustrated 16% of the time, one six, 16 out of a hundred is considered the average human dosage of suffering. <laughs> That's yep. normal. So to be right down at two is exceptional. That means you're actually actively feeling the way you want to feel 98% yep. of the time. That's except that's exceptional, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, again, and I'm sure tinnitus people can relate to this. You have fear of, I mean, you just get consumed by the sound and you just focus yeah. on it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I got, I, I got to the point when I got through module six of, um, you know, it would come and go, but when it was there, I didn't care. It, is, it wasn't affecting me. I wasn't going to, you know, have a bad day at work and, and have to leave the, the meeting room and say, I can't deal with this. I mean, seriously, you know, a, a year ago, mm -hmm. I was, you know, screaming into a pillow and saying, I, you know, a couple times a week, I can't deal with this. Yeah. I can't, I can't live like this. And so that's, that was all gone. And, and I got through and did, and got to the point where when it was around, it didn't really bother me. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the only thing I'm working on now, and what I did is I went back and I started module one over again, because, you know, it's like, it's like watching a movie for the second time. There's, there's pieces you missed the first time. There's context yeah. you have now that you didn't have then. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very helpful again. And I'm just trying to, I still notice it, you know, off and on during the day and, and I kind of like to get by even kind of, you know, I mean, by notice it, I mean like, um, it's like if you, if a filling falls out of your tooth, you know, and you, you spend all day feeling that hole in your tooth, which seems weird and it doesn't, it's not going to change your life, but you just keep noticing it. And, and so I'm still working on kind of, kind of, you know, getting the, the, that aspect of it gone, but I don't have, I, I don't fear it anymore. It doesn't change my life. Can, um, can I ask a question on the flip side? Sure. If you, well, first of all, this, and, and only share this if you feel comfortable, but what are your desired feelings at the moment? If you were to list one or two of them, just for the, for the listeners. I, you know, a lot of people say the word calm and that's what I think of. For me, what, what, what I realized was, I was feeling a sense of urgency all the time before mm -hmm. when you didn't necessarily have to be urgent, right? I mean, I, my wife would be upset because we'd be in a grocery store line. Yeah. It was moving slowly, and but it, I had really nowhere to be. But I was like, come on. I felt like that guy, you know, that you're late for a meeting and you're waiting for an elevator and you keep pushing on the button, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that, you know, feeling so, so urgent. Um, and so that, what, what my desired feeling was, was to get out of that and just to kind of, you know, let life come. Um, and I think, I mean, that's you know, really presence, isn't it? That's going, well, here yes. I am. Presence. No, that, that's exactly right. That, that's, that's the other thing in the, in module one with the body scan, you know, it, it really brought that home as well to, you know, to, to be present and kind of just feel where you are and, and all that stuff. I mean, you know, I wasn't that kind of person. It's, it's weird because, you know, I was skeptical about that type of thing. You know, how is this going to help the noise <laughs> in my head? But, you know, it, it, it did, you know, I, I took the two weeks per module. So over 12 weeks went from 28 to two. So. And so my question was, so let's, let's just condense your desired sensation into presence do you now feel confident that if any given moment you're like, oh my goodness, I'm losing myself. I want to feel presence. I want to take myself toward what I want to feel. Do you feel you've got the skills to do that? So you can close that yes. gap between what yeah, you might that's feel. A very, that, that's a very good point. Because I had gotten to, 
I thought exactly where I wanted to be about a month ago, mm -hmm. where, you know, everything was fine. If I did, you know, here's some, some noise in my head. I didn't worry about it. It was very, very, you know, minor, um, you know, and then the coronavirus issues started and it wasn't so much, you know, fear from that for me, but my, the, the work I'm in became, you know, so hectic and so, you know, stressful and, and traumatic, you know, I, I felt that I might kind of lap, relapse back into that sense of urgency and the, yeah. the loss of the, the connection with my body. And, but the tools from Rocksteady, um, you know, I think I was able, for the first week or so, it's like, oh God, I'm, you know, I'm relapsing. I can't, my, I couldn't do the balance exercises I had gotten really good at anymore all of a sudden. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, after a week or two with those tools, I think I was able to, I, I've been able to get back to, yeah. you know, the feelings that I wanted, even though I'm feeling, I, there's no way I could have dealt with this level of, of issues, you know, a year ago without yeah. those tools. And I tell you what, I'm absolutely floored because I'm holding this community of Rocksteady members and we've got an amazing Facebook group. If you're listening to this and you want to join our community, uh, we have a free Facebook group. It's a closed group and everybody shares their healing journeys. And I've been saying to people, how are you going with this COVID-19? There's a lot of fear in the world. There's a lot of fear in the media. How's it landing? And there's been plenty of people who have been like, oh my goodness, I'm more anxious, I'm more fearful, and my sensations and symptoms are heightened as well, and now I'm worried, will I go back to where I started, can I heal, there's all this doubt, and there's a little bit of that going on, but I, I would say the vast majority of community members are saying, I've got the tools, I can handle it, I'm, I'm able to be surrounded by fear and come back to my center and re-engage with my calm and in fact a lot of those people who had who had gone through the escalation of fear and the will i will i go back can i heal and the self-doubt they've been able to identify it pull themselves out of it and re-engage with the rock steady exercises physically mentally emotionally and spiritually to actually face that fear which is much more difficult to do when the world outside of us is fearful with us different when we're the only ones in fear and everybody else is chilled but now the outside world is genuinely um the, the pandemic's creating a whole new challenge incredibly a lot of our rocksteady members are just cruising through this pandemic and really they've got the skills and tools to be in lockdown and to be at home and i, I just find that a really amazing um kind of side benefit that we, we can be in our body, we can be alone because we know how to do that and we know how to reach back into our values and those desired sensations that we've put so much study into through the program. That's exactly right. I mean, with without these tools, I'm sure it would have been uh, very, very different for me yeah. because it's just, you know, hard to, hard to cope sometimes. Reach for those reach for a, a glass of wine or a, a pill yeah. because what else do you do when when honestly when when we feel so disconnected and so discombobulated we will do anything to come back and feel safe feel calm feel centered so look anything i'm just curious randy is there any any particular story or turning point you want to share before we we wrap up the call do you feel like there's any any um, any little moments of clarity you had? I think you said you were listening to one video. Yeah, for oh. me, for for me, it was it was when you said it's normal to to hear sounds in your body because again, you you kind of get into this, and, and, and you know nothing against the medical profession at mm -hmm. all, but they kind of leave you with the thought that you know, there's, there's nothing wrong that we can find that's going to kill you, but there's something wrong with you. We just, we just can't do anything about it. Sorry. Yeah. And, I have, so, can, I, can I just say something there, though? Yeah. Literally, we are taught that tinnitus is abnormal. That is in our university education. 
So it's yeah, that's what comes through. It's a mis you, at the ENT. It's a it's a total misrepresentation and misunderstanding because at the same time as an audiologist, we're taught, oh sure, the ears generate sound. We can measure them. It's totally healthy and normal. It's in children. It's in perfectly healthy teenagers. The ears do create and emit noise. And, and neural actual potentials buzzing around the head do create and emit a kind of vibrational noise. A, if you think about any moving object, even if I'm just to shake my water bottle or the idle of a car or the hum of a fridge or the, the noise of a washing machine, anything that has moving parts creates a, a subsequent noise. So it's, it's interesting that through the audiology degree, we're getting both. Part of it's like, oh, what do you do with a tinnitus client? Because they've got issues and that's abnormal, right? That, then in another lecture, they're saying, oh, sure, the ears generate totally healthy, normal noise. We don't need to do anything about it. So I think audiologists do get very unique training, but there's no doubt about it. It's abnormalized from all health yeah, professionals and, that, and all medical professionals. And I strongly disagree with that. That's, that's my one that point message, of difference. That message comes through. And that's why when I heard you say that it's normal, you know, it just it, it just gives a boost to to your your thought process and mm -hmm. really open the door because it doesn't for the need rest a cure exercises. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't need a cure because your no. body's allowed to make noise. Our job is to change our relationship to it so that the brain can ignore it and filter it out, and that is the the real secret juice of neuroplasticity. And that's what the Rocksteady process is about: changing our relationship to our body, to what we hear, and to what we feel. And I think the other piece you said, which I, which I want you to share with the listeners is something about, there's a video where I say, Hey, you tinnitus guys, you're actually, you're, you're ahead of the vertigo people. Yes. S yeah, speak about that. I was that. in module one. I was, you know, kind of going through the first, the first few um, links and it's like, okay, well, I don't have vertigo. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I'm not sure what's going on here. And then there was the tinnitus, you know, Hey, tinnitus people watch, listen to this audio. And somewhere in there, you're, you, you made the point and it made sense to me. It's like, you don't realize you guys are ahead of the curve here, right? You know, your tinnitus is you're not quite right feeling, but the, the people with vertigo, you know, need to get up to where you are to, um, you know. To take to, a staircase, to, to walk yeah. in the dark at night, to go to the toilet on their own. They're, they They don't have trust over their arms and legs and body. They're feeling incredibly unstable whereas people with tinnitus you got your body you're good the not quite right feeling is is a relationship that you're going to change and that's it's, yeah. it's it's actually a more mature part of the journey it's much more of that mental emotional spiritual um but people with acute vertigo have to start from the beginning and learn how to take a staircase again and stand and walk right and so that's when you know when when you said that i realized um you know it, it made sense at that point and and kind of open the door for the for the rest of the uh the modules yeah wonderful uh it's been such a pleasure to meet you i love meeting new faces in the community it's a very global community and so this is a real treat that we've got the technology to do it congratulations thank you for sharing your story i mean you're at two out of a hundred two percent you're you're well and truly healed there so and the, the other thing I want to close this conversation with is, is noticing body sounds is no issue. You don't even have to get rid of that. It's all about noticing with love and curiosity instead of noticing with fear and annoyance. So yes, um, focusing is not even the problem because imagine if, if our body sound became a reminder to focus in on love and compassion. And the more we had that, it would be like, oh, cool, I can tap into love and compassion multiple times a day instead of completely forgetting. So it's all about how we use it. And um, tinnitus can be reframed and turned into a lovely little inner alarm clock that brings us back to ourselves and back to that inner peace, stillness and presence. So it can be really used, as I say, you know, we can have OCD obsessive qualities that we actually use very functionally and productively. And so yeah, that, that, makes sense. that can be another way of looking at the noticing. So you don't have to get rid of it. You can just reshift how you use it. Yeah, that, make, that makes perfect sense. And that's why I'm just light years ahead of where I was and um, really thankful that, that I went through the, the Rock Study program. So excited for you. Thank you so much. Hopefully I get to maybe cross paths with you again in one of our monthly live calls. Great. Or certainly in the Facebook group if you're, if you're sharing there. 
So for those of you listening, you can visit my website, seekingbalance.com.au. And there are, there's a free starter kit. There's the Facebook group, which you can join again for free. And you can, you can witness people's healing journeys there. We share lots of stories. Every month I have live calls. Anyone can join in on those. And the replays are exclusively held there in the Rocksteady program for people who can't make it live. And all I can say is keep trusting your journey. And I'm sure Randy will, will support this statement is just don't lose faith in yourself. Even if you've heard from 30 different health professionals or doctors, there's nothing that can be done. There's nothing we can do. That is one school of thought. And there's some truth to it because the doctors can't heal you. The healing process when we enter neuroplasticity comes from within. It's, it's our body and our brain, our emotions, our thoughts. It's, it's, it's a very internal process. And what my job is, is to educate people how to do that. So if you feel like you, you want to take a different approach, visit my website, join our community and see if it resonates with you because it's well worth it. Any closing words, Randy? No, you said it, you said it very well. Don't, don't give up on the idea that, that you can get through this and, and heal or however you want to phrase it, because, um, you know, I went through for a full year thinking that it wasn't possible. And um, here I am today and just grateful for um, the tools that that are out there. And it's not hocus pocus. It's actually quite methodical and scientific, isn't it? Oh, no, absolutely. I still enjoy, uh, enjoy my balance exercises every day. That's great. I'm so happy for you. And me too. I, I just love coming back to my yoga and, having a little tiny baby, it's, you've got to make time for it. Otherwise it just slips by and weeks pass and it, it, we lose ourselves. So it's so essential. Thank you for the reminders. Thank you for your honesty. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who resonate with um, that confusion of why I go into my body, why these exercises, but there is method behind the madness and keep, keep trusting, keep believing. Visit seekingbalance.com.au. I'm Joey Remini and it's a bye for now. <laughs>